Hello, I'm Andrew Lissom, and we are back in World War K2. Now, in the last episode, we built a new heavy fighter and took it over to Juna, ready to destroy a fuel tanker, which was providing Mechjeb with important fuel in the area. And here we go. We are now in orbit around Juna. I did the circularization of the orbit and all that really tedious stuff off screen because it took a while. So, let's disconnect the heavy fighter and get that going into battle. Like I said, the, uh, the warp craft is not a... It's not a combat vessel, and it's extremely expensive with the massive 3.75 meter warp drive, the 3.75 meter antimatter reactor, 3.75 meter, lots of expensive parts and big, and we don't really want to get destroyed, so we're not going to warp straight into battle because it would probably get wasted, and it's worth probably more than that fuel tanker. So we're just going to make sure we're parked in a slightly different orbit, and we're going to send our heavy fighter off into battle, and it will take them on. Now... Just a quick recap from last episode, this heavy fighter does have three sets of two, so that's six in total, Hellfire missiles, two of which are AP, four of which are high explosive. It has got four 30mm cannons, two of which are packing high explosive and two of which are packing AP rounds. And it has perfectly good atmospheric capabilities. We saw it last time, it takes off and flies really easily. Now, some people are asking for the craft download, by the way, and uh, I'm not going to do individual craft downloads, I'm going to do mission downloads, and you can download the entire save, and the crafts will be in the save file, that's how KSP saves. So we have to go to, like, look in the save file and the craft will be in there. Of course, you will need all the mods I'm using, or at least all the parts are on this, and uh, there's a lot of parts. There's, like, B9, Interstellar, there's the Vanguard Ejection System, there's, um, Skillful, which is Infant Dice's Warfare mod, there's quite a few mods involved, so uh, feel free to download it and have a play around with it. I do really do love it. It looks amazing. A lot of people said it looks like the F-302 from Stargate. And yes, I think that was like subconsciously maybe, well, periconsciously I guess, sort of somewhere in the middle. It was in the back of my mind that I wanted it to maybe look a bit like that sort of design with the sort of the forward sweat wings and then the, uh, the raked tail planes. Now, someone mentioned putting canards on it. It doesn't really need them. Um, it's not meant to be an amazing atmospheric fighter. It's meant to be able to go into atmosphere and do bombing runs. It's not ever meant to take on an atmospheric fighter. Because in atmosphere, there will always be the advantage given to those which are dedicated solely for atmospheric flight. Because they are going to not have all the weight and the tedious stuff that you have to have for space. It's that simple. So it will do its stuff in atmosphere, if need be, but it's not designed to be brilliant there. Admittedly, it's got some crazy acceleration and power in that. Um, it probably will be able to outrun anything that tries to take it on in atmosphere currently. So we're just warping... Oh, that's really odd. Look at the spotlights. The, yeah, the B9 spotlights have a lot of issues with lighting up entire planets, which is interesting. Um... Hmm. Anyway, we're setting up a maneuver node, and you see we're getting very close. I think we're probably going to try and get within about 100 meters. So we're currently about one kilometer at the moment. Let's get this down. There we go. Ooh, ooh. There we go. That's about 100 meters. Let's choose a bit of RCS. Get it. Hmm. I think we can't get any closer than that. So let's make sure our guns are active. Turn our lights off. Because we're going to come in nice and quiet. All of our systems disabled. They won't be able to see us, and then we'll just power them all on when we're right next to them and blast the convoy with our missiles and our guns. And hopefully they should explode. The uh, the convoy, the, the fuel tanker itself, I think it has a liquid oxygen hydrogen on board. And of course, people often forget this about space. A lot of people probably know this because stuff and historical disasters. But a lot of people forget this. People are like, oh, they can't be firing space. If you have oxidizer and liquid fuel, you can, because... What do you need for fire? You need oxygen and a f fuel. O liquid fuel and oxidizer. That's that's the two parts right there. You also need heat, but they provide the heat. Um, so you need an ignition point, basically, to cause the heat. And there you have it. You Provided you have your liquid fuel and your oxidizer in the same place, or at least intermingling, you have a fire, or you can have a fire, which is incredibly deadly. I mean, Apollo 1... It wasn't actually in Apollo 1 until they named it afterwards. Um, complicated. Anyway, but it was basically a test, and the astronauts were on board the Apollo uh, capsule in the in the test area, and a fire broke out, and they all died, unfortunately. And that's because the original at the time they pressurized the capsule with 100% oxygen, and when the fire broke out, fires love 100% oxygen, and it went crazy very quickly. Um, 
these days the cabins pressurize with oxygen and nitrogen and they wear their spacesuits and inside the spacesuits they have 100% oxygen. They need that 100% oxygen so they can acclimatize to the different pressure much quicker. Um, but now because they don't want to flood the entire cabin with ridiculous amounts of oxygen and if there's a fire it go crazy, they make sure that you actually have your spacesuit has the pure oxygen and the cabin has a mix. Anyway, now we've come in very close to the Mechja fuel tanker. Let's just point to it. I've put all of our systems back on. They should be spotting us and warming up their uh, their drive to get... Well, actually, no, it looks like they've got fighters on board. Now, this is probably because we took so long in the last episode. Let's have a go. Firing our cannons. Yeah, we took so long in the last episode actually making a craft that was space-worthy that they probably got reinforcements. So this is what the fuel tank is probably doing here. It's probably here to fuel up these fighters. What they're doing around Juno, we don't exactly know. It looks like our 30mm cannons aren't having much of an effect, so let's fire some of our Hellfire. So they go, the Hellfires are away, and... Yes, it's a hit! Oh, what, one of them hit. I think the other one detonated on the other one's detonation. Um, it doesn't look like there's any crazy damage. Let's try another one. Fire again! Oh, come on, come on, come on. These are the explosive ones. The next ones will be... Uh, it looks like we've got a hit, but no damage that I can see. So let's fire these. Now, these ones are AP, so they should be able to penetrate any armor, really. Or at least most armor, if they get a direct hit. And it's a hit. It looked like we were getting good hits. I don't know if there's any much damage done. So let's fire our swarm. Now, the swarm missiles I'd always envisioned as more of an anti-fighter role. Just as they can fill up a lot of space and they do less damage. Ooh. It's crazy hits. A lot... It doesn't look like we've done any damage. Mechja must have developed some sort of crazy powerful armor. Or suppression ship. I have no idea. But Mechja, seriously, that's way beyond what I thought their forces would manage. Now, it looks like the fighters are undocking to take us on. The fighters will, of course, take a little while to warm up. So we better act quickly and try and take them out. Uh, otherwise, we're going to be in trouble. These fighters look a lot smaller. A lot, a lot shorter range, probably. A lot less valuable, but they... Uh, their armament can't be as heavy either, but then again, there's two of them. And we have used up all our Hellfires and our one rack of swarms. We've got one rack on the back of swarms left. So we're going to try and take out one of them on the pass, I think, if we can. Now I'm just trying to make sure we actually get a good lineup. There we go. Uh, ooh, a little bit lower. Yeah, there we go. That should take us within a couple of meters of our target. Now we're going to try and target that light mech jeb fighter closest to us. And we've just got to run at it, see if we can get some of our 30mm cannons on target. Now we're closely approaching to 2 meters. Of course our craft's a lot bigger than 2 meters, and it's now 1.5, 1.4, about 1.3 meters basically. Oh, and we're, ooh, we were almost into the millimeters there. So 1.5 meters, 1.4 meters. 1.1 meters. There we go. We're in millimeters. We'll be hitting this thing directly on. The idea is we're going to just run at it, fire a lot of cannon shots. It looks like we are getting a couple of hits. I don't know if we've done any damage. Let's just hope we have. Oh, oh. Okay, quick. Burn, 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 burn. Oh, grazed it. Now the mech jab fighters look like they're going to take us on. Look at that armament there. That looks like four, probably probably 50 cals, I guess. Mm. Not as heavily armoured as us. They, they've only got 50 cals. We've got 30 millimetres, which are kind of 1.25 cals or something, for those of you uh, who don't use the metric system. Um, so we have a lot better armament, but then again, there are more of them. And it looks like they have more ammo than us, so they can keep firing. We're going to run out of ammo sometime soon. We don't have extra ammo on board, I think. Uh, our heavy fighter doesn't have extra ammo. But there they go. They fired. Looks like a Hellfire missile. And it looks like it's actually missed. It looks like it's veering off to the side. Oh, it's veering towards us. There's a plume of dust. It might have hit us. Let's just hope the damage isn't too bad. Now the second Mechja fight is also incoming. It's firing two Hellfire missiles. Now, if we can close quickly, the Hellfire missiles won't be able to turn towards us. We'll be able to just go inside their reach. I can't actually see them. But then again, it's black smoke against black. So I'm hoping that by going towards the fighters, the missiles will arc around behind us and miss. 
Now, we're going to try and see if we can close the distance. And I think we're going to try and use our backfiring swarm missiles. See if we can take them out with them. Alright, let's line ourselves up and get a bit closer and... Wait for it. Wait for it. Fire! Right. Uh, oh, one problem with this is that they are going to turn around and arc back towards us. Um, okay, let's burn. Let's try and avoid getting hit by our own missiles. Quick burn. This is going to be tight. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we're lucky. Oh, oh. Oh, they missed. Damn it. Damn it. We're going too fast. But it looks like the other mech jib fighter must have caught some of the blast. It's... Yes, we've damaged the mech jib unit. One of the fighters is out of the battle. First blood to... Well, first... Circuit. First electrons to... I don't know. What do you say against an AI? Anyway, we won that bit. Now there's one fighter left. We still haven't, of course, taken down our target, which is, of course, that fuel tanker. Hmm. Unfortunate. Now, we're closing on the fuel tanker. The other mech fighter is coming around on our tail. We do have more power than them, actually. We have a better reactor and are running off lithium. And I think they're running off liquid fuel, but they've got a smaller reactor than us. So we do have the advantage in terms of firepower and fire. Uh, sorry, not fire. And uh, weaponry. Firepower, weaponry. Same thing. And, and power plant and maneuverability and speed. Because in space, maneuverability doesn't necessarily mean a small craft. It means a big power plant to craft ratio, really. So in space, our bigger, heavier craft is actually the more agile. Um, maybe not necessarily agile. Its RCS isn't very heavy. But the mecha fight's coming in on our tail. Oh, oh. It's got hits. It's managed to destroy something. It's damaged us. It's going under us. Oh, oh, we've taken some serious damage. Oh, something exploded. Oh, we think, we had, we think we've got damage on the front there. The mech jib fighter is getting a lot better at shooting us. Oh, that looked like a hit to our wing. Oh, there's another hit. Oh, oh, what was that? That looked like something important. Okay, right, we've got a damaged wing. We've got a damaged intake. We've got a damaged flap. We've got a damaged, uh, well, structural piece. That doesn't really matter. Okay, right, we've got so much damage, I think we're going to have to bug out. We are actually out to 30mm rounds, and we have used all of our explosive ordnance. The back missile uh, pod for the swarm missiles is also destroyed completely. I think we're going to have to bug out. Now, we have no problem bugging out. We still have our reactors online and our engines. And, like I said, we have much more power, so we can just bug out easily. There isn't any way we can really take them on now. We're going to have to leave. And this one's going to be... I guess a draw. I mean, we killed one small fighter, but they still have their fuel tanker, and we have some severe damage to our heavy fighter. Which, of course, costs a lot more than their small fighter did. So we're just going to bug out using the automatic uh, rendezvous autopilot to rendezvous with our bigger craft in high orbit. Now, this would be a problem if we were slower than the mech jib, uh, fighter. The mech jib fighter could tail us and then take on our warp transit craft. But since we're faster, we can just get back to it, and then we can warp out of here. There isn't any way for them, really, to, uh, to interfere. So, let's uh, move to Rendezvous, and then we'll warp ahead, and I'll skip back to when we're in orbit around Kerbin. This has been a kind of a draw, I guess, and not the best show of our new craft. Obviously, Mechjeb have got some sort of crazy powerful armor going on, on their fuel tanker. This might be an issue. Right, we are back around Kerbin. We have a lovely orbit. It took me a very long time to do that again. I still need to get better with the whole warping procedure. Now we're going to... We're running off lithium. Uh, we'll switch over to vacuum, just save as much lithium as possible. Dumping lithium into the atmosphere can't be too bad for us, can it? Really? I mean, can it? Maybe we just stick with the lithium, I don't know. Now nah, we'll switch to quantum vacuum. We'll be safe. We'll be good. And let's do our deceleration burn. Now we're going to try and land at KSP, uh, KSP, KSC, and see if we can uh, we can land this thing on the pad. Now the issue is we have got a damaged wing and a damaged flap. At the air intake, I'm not fussed about. We won't need that much power, and we don't need extra intake. But the problem is with that wing, we will be lacking one side worth of lift, and with the flap damage, we won't be able to 
really control that flat very easily. So, I'm worrying. I don't know if we've got in atmosphere capability. We still have perfectly easy capability outside atmosphere, but I'm not sure if we've got the capability in atmosphere. And currently, we don't have anywhere outside of Kerlin to really repair our craft. So, we're going to have to go back to base. So we also need to refit our craft and figure out how the hell uh, Mechjeb managed to defeat our weaponry. So, we're in atmosphere now. And we've just got to land this puppy. Now, so far, it looks fairly stable. As you can see there, we're just overshooting the, uh, the space center. That will, of course, move backwards as, uh, as we fall. But, of course, we will get some lift as a space plane. So we will actually not be quite as far back as you would expect. So we're going to switch over to using our standard thermal jet engines, which are really crazy powerful when you attach them to the antimatter. And I may have forgot to take the heat panels in, so we've destroyed our heat panels. Well, that's going to be hard to explain to the engineers on the ground. Luigi will probably best to write that up as a loss in combat, I think. Otherwise, you might get shouted at. Those heat panels probably cost uh, more than a month's pay. This is an expensive craft, uh, a new prototype. And of course, it looks very pretty when entering the atmosphere into a sunrise. Now, it looks like we are going to fall short, actually. So I'm going to try and lift us... Oh! Whoa, that didn't work. We're flopping sideways. It looks like we don't have as much control as I'd like over one side of the craft, which is, of course, the right side being very damaged. So I'm going to try and power us out of it. Got to pull up a little bit. Come on. Come on, Luigi. Come on, Will. You can do it. There's some mountains in front of you, so you'll get some pull up. There we go. Doing well. We're not falling so quickly now. There we go. There we go. Excellent. And bring this back to craft back to base and we can investigate the flight recorder and all that to get all the data. Whoa! Okay, we're in a spin. We're in a, a spin at low altitude at high speeds. Um, normally when you get into this sort of crazy spin, you want to power off the engines. Point sort of slightly downwards and then pull out of it, but we don't have the height, so I'm, I'm just hoping that we will get lucky. But the question is... Do we have enough height? And I don't think we do. I think we've got about a kilometre and a half, maybe, before we hit the ground. That's probably optimistic. The ground is coming up very fast. It's a kilometre now. 500 metres. We're going to have to bail. Goodbye. And the craft is destroyed. Hopefully the flight recorder will still be intact and we can recover some data. And next time... We're going to try and do better. We're going to develop some new weaponry. We're going to go in and we will take them down. Now, it's a good job none of our antimatter cells were hit, because uh, those would be pretty bad an explosion if they were hit and fail containment. Luigi and Will staring off into the sunrise at the abandoned craft and the uh, the ruins of it. I've been Entrilisium, and if you've enjoyed World War K Series 2, please like the video, it's really helpful, and please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will catch you next time, so stay shiny.